Okay, hey guys. Uh, so the second function uh, within this control code is the move A to B function. Okay, and so you notice it's got four output arguments. Okay, so encoder A, power A, encoder B, and power B. I'll explain what they are a little bit later. And then you've got move move A to B, the actual name of the function, and you've got okay, a, one set of coordinates uh, called A and one set of coordinates called B. Okay, so A and B are similar to the joint angles, just a um, straight coordinate uh, row vector like that. Okay, um, you can look through the example if you want uh, and the help help sort of section, but I'll just go straight in and start explaining. Okay, so you notice the first thing it calls is the joint angles uh, function. So the first thing that you do this function does is, is it calls this one and it return goes in and does the whole joint angles business, all that okay and it returns q1 and q2 now the reason for this is uh, q1 and q2 they can be positive or negative as you saw back down in this example that we just did quickly so you see notice it's 630 uh, for but when you can controlling the robot uh, your power or your speed sets the um, you set it to between negative 100 and 100 and that controls the direction and then you set your attacker limit to be um, the number of ticks you want to move so what this function, this moves A to B function is, is doing is, is basically taking those two uh, sets of encoder values, Q1 and Q2, looking at whether they're positive or negative, and, um, and then setting the power respectively. What it also is doing, to, mo to move in a straight line, you obviously want um, both, you want, when you go from A to B, you want uh, both motors to move relative uh, at relative speeds to each other so that means when they finish so basically if one's moving at one needs to move 600 uh, encoded ticks and one only needs to th move 300 encoded ticks you want the one that moving moving at 600 encoded ticks to move faster than one at 300 that has to move 300 so that they reach their uh, the destination at the same time because if you set them at different power at the same power level of 100 then the one that only has to move 300 encoded ticks is going to get to its destination as such where its final configuration much faster than the other one and if you're trying to move in straight lines that's obviously not what you want to do you want them, you want them to reach the destination at the same point no, at, sorry at the same point in time okay and so what we so the first thing I do is call the join angles function and then what I do is I set up another variable called q1 absolute and q2 absolute okay just taking the absolute values of q1 and q2 this is just to just make it a little bit easier for the code to read and um, and manage and just for when I'm looking at the power and setting the magnitudes so first off I'm going to set the magnitude of the power levels or the speed levels so basically if Q1 absolute is greater than Q2 so if Q1's if the value that motor A needs to turn in terms of encoded ticks is greater than what motor B needs to turn then let's set power A to be the higher power so let's just set it at 100 and then let's set power B equal to, okay, so first off, we've got, let's look at just this part here. So it's going to be a ratio, okay, and the ratio simply is, okay, take the value of Q2, okay, so take whatever Q2 is and divide by Q1, okay, so take the smaller one and divide by the larger one, okay, and times by 100, okay. So what that's do is that's going to set a ratio of whatever. So say let's say Q1 is equal to 300 and Q2 is equal to 100. Then really you want Q2 to move only at one third of Q Q1. So you just simply go Q2 uh, divided by Q1. So the smaller one divided by the larger one and times by 100. Okay, to get 3.333. The reason I times by 100 is because that's what Q1 is Q1 power level is set at. Okay, you then round it. Okay, so round answer in this case to 33 because it needs to be an integer. I then take the absolute of it is because um, just to make sure that I'm only wanting to set the magnitude. I don't want to set the direction yet. So just to make just if Q2 is negative and Q1 is positive, then if you don't set the absolute, it's going to already be negative. Um, so I just like to. I just put in absolute there, and that was one of the errors that uh, was in my original code, the first set of control code. I didn't have this absolute here, and it was stuffing a few things up. 
So just take the magnitude of it by doing the absolute of that rounding and that ratio. Okay, and then there's another else if statement. If Q1 is less than Q2, so basically uh, if they're, if Q1 is the smaller one, set the mo speed of motor B to be the higher or 100% and then do the same do the same sort of ratio thing for motor A. Okay, so take the small one, divide by the larger one and times by the larger one's power, or 100 in this case, and then round and take the absolute, just the magnitude. Else if Q1 uh, absolute is equal to Q2 absolute, when you're trying to do, um, when you're doing if statement and you're trying to do, uh, see, see if comparing if two things are equal, make sure you do the double equal signs. If you only do one, it's doing the, um, it's not doing what you want to do. Uh, but you need to do the other double equal signs to compare two values in the if statement. Well then, if they're both equal, that means they um, you can just set both of the powers for the motors or the speed of the motors both to 100. Okay, and then n to n the uh, if and else if statements. Okay, so we've now set the magnitude of our power level based on the um, how much uh, both motors need to move. We then are going to set the direction. Okay, uh, now you shouldn't, if you set up your joint angles correctly, you won't need to change any of this. Okay, that code you won't need to even look at. You can play with it if you want, but you, probably, you don't need to. Okay, you then need to set, set the direction of the power. So in this case, if Q1 is greater than 0, then power to A is equal to negative 1 times power A. So I'm just saying, basically, if Q1 is greater than 0, I want to tell my motor to spin in the opposite direction how end and then and then end that if statement and if q2 is less than zero i want power b to be spin in the opposite direction um, this thing might be counterintuitive as such the only reason that these are opposite is because obviously depending how you orientate your motor in your in, on your robot itself uh, a positive power might spin it clockwise or counterclockwise so it just depends on how you set up your motor. So if you run this control code, this move A to B within the within the entire demo control two, and you find that it's uh, one or both of the motors are going different directions, just you just have to change. Uh, you'll have to invert these to be the opposite. So rather, if you found that your first re you found the your base revolute joint was uh, ro was rotating in the wrong direction, you simply just need to change this to be less q1 less than zero and it should be fine okay uh, you could also set up if you didn't want to do this absolute thing up here what you could also do is have another else if statement saying else if q1 is less than zero then set the power a to be positive as such um, but i just did it up here to make it only one if statement down here it's up to you ignore that if you did not understand that little part then about the absolute part okay um so yeah so set direction of power doing that by that Again, this is the part of this code that you might need to change, just depending on how you've configured your, how you've set up the motors um, in terms of their actual physical orientation. Okay, and then we simply say encoder A is equal to the absolute of Q1, and encoder B is equal to the absolute of Q2. Again, the reason for that is because the taco limit or taco limit um, is uh, only only accepts positive values. Okay, uh, the other th and so basically. In this whole move A to B code, you shouldn't have to change anything if you set up joint angles correctly, which you would have, um, and you you only may need to change this sign, okay, the this inequality sign to be um, the the opposite of what it is, okay. Uh, the other the other thing that you may want to do is always make sure that power A or power B is set to um, at least one and encoder A or encoder B is set to also um, just one. The reason for that is because uh, if you set both, like say, power A, encoder A, both to zero, what you're actually doing is you're saying when you set taco limit, taco limit, not taco, taco limit to zero, you're actually saying spin infinitely, um, but if you set your power A to zero, then it's not going to spin at all. And then when you do that wait for command, like send to angst and then wait for, uh, what it's going to do is going to keep checking to make sure that part of A is spun a little bit or something like that and it screws up. Um, so you just want to make sure that either you have at least one value, like one degree in here, 
uh, which is probably the easiest way to do it. Just make sure that you have at least one here in both the encoder and encoder B bar. Oh, no, sorry. I'd put make sure that you have at least 1% of power in power A or power B, and you should be sweet. Okay? Um, so that's that code. So again, to give you a demo of how it works, uh, let's redo this up here. Okay? So... Okay, so these were the values we got before. Q1 is negative 630 and Q2 is 0. So that's from that example previously. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up... Okay, so we're going to look at... So if you look at what this thing actually outputs, it outputs QA. Okay, so that's the number of encoded ticks that motor A must move. And then output speed of the motor, or power A. Um, so the speed of A and then number of motor uh, encoder ticks that motor B must move and then the speed of B okay is equal to move A to B okay and we don't actually have to put in Q1 and Q2 obviously because it does the joint angle itself we just need to put in A and B so A B okay and okay you notice that QA is just 630 now, not the negative 630 like it was if you just did the joint angles. So that's good. And you notice that it's set to 100. Again, we should be expecting that from our code, seeing as it's the larger one. And you notice that QB is set to zero, and so the speed should also be set to zero because obviously it doesn't need to move, it, move anything. Okay? Um, but yeah, you may want to set this to actually be uh, one or something like that just so it sometimes you might get an error uh, with this configuration okay uh, just based on how they've set up the uh, toolbox okay uh, so that's what that function does I hope you kind of understand it a bit better now uh, but really yeah all this function is doing is calling the inverse kinematics and then based on the n values and the signs of um, the magnitude and the signs of Q1 and Q2 how far both the motors need to move, it sets up the magnitude um, and direction of your speeds or your powers as, so, um, as well as uh, re, re, kind of recalculate or sets just sets the encoders to be just the magnitude themselves. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's all this function does.